Welcome to the People's Network Television. You know, more and more kids today are becoming in tune with their environment and their society. As the leaders of tomorrow, some are taking charge today. With me now is Marla Apt, a senior at Crossroads Preparatory. Marla is co-founder of an organization called the Peace and Justice Resource Center. Welcome to the show, Marla. All right, thanks. Uh, first, Marla, I'd like to know what type of organization is the Peace and Justice and what's its purpose? We're a sort of student-run community service. It's like kids, if they have interests, we will cater to their needs. It's not just our own ideas of what we want to do. Let's say there, a lot of people at my school are working for different organizations, and if they come to us and say, we need support for a certain rally we're planning or something like that, then we'll say, okay, sure, we'll support you. If they want to come and say, we want to learn something about um, this subject about animal abuse, so we'll say, well, there's an organization, and, and we'll get them information. And that's why we call ourselves a resource center, because we'll, we'll, we're in tune with the community, so we can help with any kind of ideas that people are interested in. Oh, that's really good. Um, the Peace and Justice title, that implies that you don't just deal with global issues. Am I right? Right. It's, that's like a really strong basis of our club, is that it's not just global issues, but we deal with a lot of local issues right here. Like, we do food drives for, for the people who are the poverty-stricken people in Santa Monica, environmental issues, things dealing with, with animals. We don't only deal with the political, worldly type issues, because there's, it's right here in our backyard, and if you want to start with peace, it has to start right in your backyard. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, what inspired you or motivated you to form this organization? Well, I just think that it's not like I went to a lecture one day and all of a sudden, ding, there it was. I thought, I've got to do something. I've just felt like, you know, my whole life is ahead of me and it's going to be a good one. And there are definite things that we see that since we're the generation of tomorrow, we have to change and we have to deal with it. One of us is going to be president. We're going to have to deal with the whole thing. We have to change it all. So I'm just, we're just working to make our own lives better. Well, many kids are becoming involved with current issues right now. And this is reminiscent of 20 years ago. The kids then were fueled by a war. What do you think is sparking the kids of the 80s to chart their own destiny? Well, I'm not really sure. I think it's com partly coming out of the me generation. People are starting to see that my God, all these things have been going on and they've just been ignored. And they see, and maybe education more, there, there have been people out trying to educate the public lately. And once you, once you hear about things, you just want to do something about it. But I think there's still a lot of apathy among kids today. I don't think it's definitely like they've all jumped on some kind of bandwagon, not yet. Well, for the Peace and Justice organization, is it made up mostly of Crossroads students? Um, do you ever collaborate with other organizations? Well, our actual group is at Crossroads campus. We do, like, if we're good, there's events that other groups have planned, such as Beyond War or other organizations have planned a rally, we'll go to their rallies because it's hard to get to plan your own rally for your own school when you only have a limited amount of people at your school and other organizations need everybody else's support. So we go and support other organizations that we think are doing a really good job, like One Voice is an organization that we work with a lot, and Amnesty International, they, they deal with p issues that we feel like they're doing it so well that we want to support them. Yeah. Well, most recently you hooked up with Seth Klein, right? Um, he's a young nuclear, anti-nuclear activist. How did that meeting come about, and what could we expect from that? Well, he was a student who toured across Canada, and he spoke to about one out of every 20 kids in Canada, students in Canada about nuclear disarmament. And he really empowered the youth there. I mean, that's an incredible amount of students to speak to. So we called him down here, and he spoke to us. And he basically, we talked about organizing the kids together, organizing the youth of LA to organize our own clubs at our own schools if they're already not established. And so what we're doing now is we have kids from so many different schools across LA and we're going to start meeting all the time on a normal basis and we're going to 
have them get groups going at their school and then we're going to form a network of Los Angeles students and so when, if we plan something we're all going to support each other and we can go in together and we're going to have major masses of students even though at each individual school it might be a few students because not every school gets so much support. And I'm really excited about this because it's going to be great having a network of students because we're going to stand as a strong voice of the students of Los Angeles. So was that idea to meet up with him, yours, um, your organization planned that out. Yeah, we. There's this lady from the Physicians for Social Responsibility saw Seth and his friends speak in Moscow. So she told us about about him, and we invited him to come down and spend the weekend with us and train us and about how to, about public speaking and about how to organize kids and how to make your own organizations and how to empower the youth was basically because he I think he's a good example of what we'd like to start in the United States. Um, was he exhilarating? Did it rub off on you that you could make the difference in that same way? Oh, I think definitely. I mean, we are sort of getting worried about our club in a sense that you know, it's, it's hard to know if people are interested and, and he gave us a lot of new ideas to how to make it strong and he, he was really optimistic about how they've made so many changes and so now we see a lot of ways that we, and of course we believe that we can make a difference, but he's shown us a lot of examples that they've made a difference through working through the system and with the government and politics. They've made all kinds of changes and so now we're excited about starting that now and not only did he really get to us because we already had established our club before he came but there were a lot of students there who had started a club they just came because they're interested and now they're really ready to work and they're going to join our network and they're going to hopefully form clubs at their school which is I, I thought that's just beautiful and I wish we could do that ourselves if we had the power to speak like that and go around and be able to go to schools and have kids just want to form clubs after we speak and want to do something because that means you're making the link up and multiplying your own power to have one voice. Definitely, that's what we want it to be, one voice. Well, what are some up and coming plans of action that your organization has? Well, right now at Crossroads, what we're planning on doing is we're going to propose to make our school a nuclear weapons free zone. It's, more, it's a symbolic gesture. It's, it's not going to say that oh if there's a war they're not going to drop bombs on our school it's it's we're going to try to get we're going to take a vote and the kids so the kids will be involved and then we're going to get plaques made and, and our school will be declared a nuclear weapons free zone and then hopefully other schools across Los Angeles are going to do the same thing and we hope to get co coverage for this and be acknowledged in Washington that so many schools in Los Angeles this amount of schools declared themselves nuclear weapons free zones and then maybe other institutions will start doing that and it'll be a really strong statement that just letting them know that we are not supporting nuclear weapons and we want something done about it. it it'll be a really strong statement I'm really excited about it. Well you could start a really positive domino effect in the in the way that by doing one good thing with your school and other schools seeing it they will in effect maybe say well hey we have the power to and do that that would be a really good feeling for you I'm sure that maybe you inspired some other people's schools to go out and show the voice and the power that they have even though they say well we might be teenagers but we do have views and opinions and now we have someone to say someone's going to listen to them Oh, definitely. I think that's the purpose. It's not just for our own purpose, for us to do something. That's, it's like a chain reaction. We want to start off inspiring people all over and, and younger kids. We want to inspire everybody and we want everybody to get up and have action because it, it, we won't have really done much if it was just us. We, that's the whole point is that other, that other people, it doesn't matter if they're, they're agreeing on the same topics as us. It's just that they realize that they can work within our system and that they have power and that this is a democratic system and that we are going to use our democracy and I want and I get the feeling that a lot of people don't feel that way they don't feel like they're, they have the power they're yeah. scared to jump in and, and I think that that's definitely what we want to just let them know hey it's available to you and that you have the support because then people feel more confident to come out and say what they feel when they feel that they're being backed up by something even stronger Right. 
Well, your organization is still in its building years, though, and sometimes you may not always be as organized as you know some other group, or people they may not take you seriously for reasons of your age or whatever. Your capacity is not large enough for them to think you're anything to be taken serious, and. I'm sure that for you, sometimes that can be frustrating. How do you cope with the things that make you want to give up, even though you know that your cause is worth fighting for? Oh, sure. Um, I think one of the main things that keeps you going is that you're never going to know it all, and you're never going to have even scratched the surface of what your own morals are and what you want to take a stand on. So I think the thing that keeps me interested will just keep on educating myself. There's always so much I can learn, and if I've gotten burned out on a certain certain issue and that I don't feel like I'm getting support for and I just feel like I've I've done enough with it then there are so many other things that I have to learn and that by constantly educating myself I'm constantly raising my consciousness and always saying wow there's something here I, that I'm needed for and I, I think as long as I continue to educate myself I'll, I'll always be interested there's just so much for me to there, there's never a point when I can stop so it's not going to get you down sometimes when you have to, you know, try even harder to get people to come out or like if you wanted to form something and people didn't show up or people didn't remember because it just doesn't seem like it's as important to them, um, you're not going to let that deter you from what you want to achieve. Oh, well, sure, it's frustrating. It really is because it's hard to get your word around about when you're planning an event or something to get people to come. But we know that, I know that if I plan something and a lot of people don't show up, I know that it's not that people aren't interested because I know people are interested. I'm sure we all know people that want to do something. It's just that I went about it wrong about trying to get the people to come. So I have to find new ways of getting it heard about I don't know, I, that's always something for me to work on about how am I going to get people to come. But I know that there are so many people that are interested. If people bother to call you up and ask you about it, or if people bother to show up at a meeting, that means they want to do something. And so there are plenty of people out there. It's just that we have to find ways of going about to make them feel like they can get involved. So you're learning these things as you go along, um, how to get the public aware of your events and how to get people to come out and support you because, I mean, I'm sure you haven't done this before oh, and yeah. there isn't really um, a learning center as to how to do that. Right. So you have to take these things step by step as they happen, which means that you might learn a lot more by your mistakes. Does that somewhat help suffice for when things don't turn out the way that they are supposed to or the way that you expect? Oh, definitely. I mean, this is all so new to me. I'm not definitely not any expert on any of this. It's just I'm just another person that wanted to do something, and I want other people to to be able to do it too. I want them to be able to feel like they can do something. And I, I, of course, I might do a lot of things wrong. I'm just it's all a new adventure for me. And so I, just, you're right. There's no place where I can go to where people can tell me how can you do this, how can you start a group, and, but you know, it's always something new. Well, how do you get other teenagers to get interested? I mean, maybe they're already interested, maybe that's not the word, to, to get involved because sometimes it may be hard to recruit people, especially when it's the younger generation who might not believe that the issue is really that serious and would rather do something else on a Saturday afternoon than, you know, lick a hundred envelopes to mail out to people. Right. Well, I think that part of it is is everybody is going to have an opinion about a certain issue, even whether they want to or not. And I think the point is you have to educate them to the point where they can form that opinion. And if they feel like you've just spoken to them about something and they don't know where they stand on that issue, then you haven't educated them enough to be able to form their own opinion. And I feel like it's all in educating and just be making people aware of what's going on. And if you educate them, then they'll form an opinion. And if you have a strong enough opinion, you're going to want to support it. And I believe that by doing that, by speaking or whatever, have it showing them movies, anything that'll get them aware of things, problems, issues for them to think about, then they'll form a moral or an ethical decision about it and they're going to want to act upon it and that's the whole key to it is that you have to reach that point, you have to trigger that point in them where they feel like 
they, they understand it strongly enough to be able to stand up for the way they feel Or they it. feel strongly enough about it that they want to try and make a difference or support whoever is agreeing with them on the difference that they're trying to make in terms of um, a teenager trying to be convinced that nuclear war is a, is, a, is a real threat because a lot of people might not believe that it is. You, you're going to try and make them understand what's really happening and then they will form their own opinion as to saying, well, it's no big deal or it's a big deal and I need to do something or it isn't a big deal because I agree with the government and whatever else is happening because they know what they're doing or whatever they think. Right. So you're trying to get them to the point where they are making a decision for themselves and when they decide that they want to do something, this is what your organization is there for. Right, exactly. I mean, Seth Klein said that when he went around to all these schools at the end of almost every presentation, he asked the students, how many of you are want to stop the arms race? And he said at every school he went to, everybody raised their hand. And of course, everybody has a different way. Some people don't support the free. Some people don't support unilateral disarmament, things like that. But everybody wants the same goal, right? And so that's the, that's the key important thing is we all want the same goal. And how to go about it, people have to decide for themselves. And then they have to go about it in exactly. that way. And so what I'm saying is that everybody's going to have an opinion on it. And we don't, and we're not saying that yours is right or yours is wrong, of course. We want people to just feel comfortable with their gut instinct because whatever they feel, it's right for them. But you are going to help them find a path of how to do it. It's like when someone has energy and they want to help, but they don't know how, right. then you're already there to say, well, this is a path that we found that works for right now. Right. We want to help them channel their ideas into action. Okay. Well, you know, being a school organization, do you get much support from your administration? Or do they brush you off as, you know, a kids club? and Or, or are they ashamed that you uh, um, are bringing in the influence that there are things that um, you can approve about America because they don't want you to maybe bring up at all that there's something wrong? No, in my school, we get a lot of support. I think that we're lucky compared to most schools because I hear a lot of people complain about how their clubs aren't nearly as supported as the other clubs like the cheerleaders club or whatever they don't get the kind of support from their administration or from the parents but in my school it's encouraged they that's exactly what the philosophy of our school is about and they want kids to organize themselves that it's it's a more think for yourself type campus and so we're definitely, I mean, they, it's, it's wonderful the way they all try to, to bend over to help us. They're, it's just a wonderful thing. Our, our administration is very helpful. That's really lucky. Yeah. You know, there's um, a Peace and Freedom Party going on right now, and it was established in the 1960s, and it's still very strong. Do you think that your organization is going to withstand your graduation and separation from Crossroads? Well, that's our main concern. Our, it's not just for this year. It's We're really getting it underway mostly this year because last year we started it in the middle of the year and it was too late to really get people to know what we were trying to do. So this year we're, we're trying to work really hard and most of the people that are interested actually are the younger students, which is really important. And we want to be able to give them a chance to lead the group as much. We don't want to make ourselves the leaders. We want to give them a chance to take any leading roles in the group so that they feel that after we leave, they're going to have, they're going to know how to organize this thing. And we hope that this club continues on and on. We just hope we just started something that's going to start to grow because that's the whole purpose is that we didn't have one on our campus and it's important that we do and I think definitely a lot of the younger kids seem interested and that's the important thing to go for the younger kids because they're the ones that are going to continue this whole thing and they're going to keep it up and you don't have to worry that they're so dependent on whether you lead it or not that the club will fall apart the minute you disembarked right. from that school We're yeah right we try to create a type of atmosphere where it's all our ideas are, are all equal and, and we all have are going to have equal tasks and none of us, we don't say one of us is the president of the club. Maybe some of us are older and we, we started with the idea, but anybody who comes up with an idea, we want them to feel like we will say to them, yes, 
how do you think we should, can go about that? And then we'll let them plan the whole thing and so that they'll feel like they'll know how to take control. And that's the way our club, we'd like it to run so that it's all equal. And so that these, these kids, hopefully, I see that right now, if they had to, they could take control of the club for sure. And so I'm really hoping that they'll continue. I really hope they do. I'm sure they will if they get inspired throughout this year, if they feel like they've made a difference. Yeah, and they know that they can take the role of leadership and not, um, you know, mess it up or do something that they think will be to the uninterest of the club. Once you make them feel that they have that kind of confidence, then it'll be much easier for them to do it without you than right. it is right now. But when you, next year, go on to college, are you planning to continue your work um, or will you join a club that's already established or will there be a, a new chapter of the Peace and Justice? Well, I hope that whatever school I'm going to be at next year that they'll already have a club established. And if not, then I'll, I mean, I'll continue my work and, and any interest I have, of course. I'm, I'm never going to stop. I mean, it's a continuing thing forever in my life. It's my life. I have to do, I won't be fulfilled unless I just do the things that I'm interested in. So I hope that there will be already a club that I can already have all the support and that I can already join in with other people and see. But if not, then it's a possibility that we'll start something. Definitely I want to plan things. I want to be able to do, act upon my interests. Hypothetically speaking, if you were um, in college and in a group that was already established, would you try to link it up with the Peace and um, Justice Resource Center? Would you try to connect them even though you are out of high school just because it's an organization that you still might have ties to? Oh, I think that would be a great idea. I think that I would, I would always want to continue to support them. I'd be so proud if they continued and if they ever needed any help support if they ever need any contacts in Los Angeles then I would always be happy to support them or come down and, and help them with um, with events they're planning oh I definitely love that if they'd ever need to turn to me so is as it stands right now your organization is going to try and declare your school as a nuclear free zone would you um, recommend it to other schools oh definitely that's what we're trying to do is get as many other schools we already with our network that we started these schools that are represented they plan on trying to do the same thing at their school and i hope they succeed because when they do it'll be very significant saying that all these schools that so many schools in los angeles have done this for instance in canada most of the schools that Seth spoke to, they all, after he spoke, they started their own organizations. And many of them became nuclear free zones, which inspired a lot of interest among other institutions. And many provinces in Canada became nuclear free zones. And now one of the leading candidates for the next prime minister is going to, is on his platform, he says if he becomes prime minister, he's going to declare all of Canada a nuclear weapons free zone, which is just incredibly significant. So if that kind of thing is said over Los Angeles, Los Angeles has developed such an interest in this, then... Well, that could be a major chain reaction oh. because it could, um, it could get all of Southern California, which is such a capital in itself oh, definitely. of the California state. But um, how many schools in particular were represented at this last meeting with Seth Klein? Um. Do you know? I think there are about eight from all over LA. Just from the Los Angeles County, though. Yeah. Well, Some more private. Okay, and 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 in this two-day meeting, were there other moments where you thought about um, not just nuclear freeze, where you were thinking, okay, well, this sparks an idea about something else that our organization can do? Oh, definitely. We already just being there. We already. Um, caught on to a few ideas that we're, we're starting to plan right now. It's in the process like we're going to get a sister school in Russia that's going to do the same thing with the nuclear freeze. We hope to have them declare their school a nuclear free zone. So then both our schools together will be and that and that in itself will, will make a great statement just for them that they'll have that tie with us. Just the communication type thing that we both want. And what it'll represent just automatically. Oh definitely and and 
and we there were a lot of other ideas that we had that are going to tie in with other groups of our campus time with student council time with this group that is feeding the the poverty stricken people around LA so we we've already seen a lot of ways to, to begin well um, are there people in your organization that hold student student council at your school no there's nobody some of them are are some of them are involved in other groups like Amnesty International but there's nobody who's actually like a president or a secretary there's not that many positions um, is your um, organization unbiased politically well I'd say that we don't we're not saying that we're supporting a certain side because we're not of course everybody in our group has different political beliefs when you get down to the small details but certain issues that we're gonna take of course are gonna veer towards one side which isn't because that's the way we, we we're trying to make a political stand it's because that the way we stand for it happens to be that only one side of the spectrum is taking that stand themselves for instance like if we're gonna go out and if we're gonna do a, um, a rally f for um, against contra aid I mean it's gonna sound like we're a liberal club and that we're more towards the Democrat side but that's not definitely what we're saying it's just that that happens to be that the left side supports that stand but that's not what we try not we try to be open-minded we are well, open yeah because because being against contra aid isn't necessarily saying that you are liberal it's saying that right. you are not promoting war because that's what it might be to your group but right. you don't it's not necessarily that you have picked a political preference oh definitely not because I mean I see that both sides want the same goals and so everybody has different ways of going about it and we haven't even decided all our ways that we think we should go about reaching these goals and if we all want the same goals I'm sh there are so many things we're all gonna agree with each other about and I don't see anybody in our club has closed themselves to one political side I don't see anybody in my group is really political well that's good because when you become closed-minded then you're not as open to seeing what the ideas on the other side might mean for you like you might say well that's just too reactionary or that's just too radical for me to even try and consider so mm -hmm. by keeping it in the not middle of the road but by keeping yourselves neutral about the politics then you're able to help the people much better right we just go with our instinct however we feel and if it happens to be on the right side or on the left side we're gonna do it we're not afraid of a reputation being marred because we don't have one so we can do anything okay well thank you so much Marla